Wherever you are, let's all be seated in the presence of God. Thank you so much. Praise Him. One of the things that I want to assure you is something the Holy Ghost is saying all over the world is this. Church is entering into another wave of Holy Ghost extended worship. Let me explain. It's the kind of worship that is spontaneous. The kind of worship that is extended. For this one reason. The kind of, it's the kind of worship that will connect us with heaven. I'll say that again. Connect us with heaven. And until that time, the people that will be very careful to listen to that kind of move of God will not rush maybe to give a sermon or a sermonette. They will not be in a hurry to do anything in the name of the program. Because as many as are led of the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. That's where we are going. Holy Ghost energized extended worship. I want us to go on with where we left in the earlier service. Just in case you are not with us in the earlier service, I thank God for you that you are able to join us now either through the live stream or maybe you'll be downloading later. Whichever way, God richly bless you. We especially bless the name of the Lord for they that are streaming right now from our city here in Kiambu, from the many parts of Kenya, from Africa and from the other parts of diaspora. I even saw somebody from Swaziland streaming. God bless her so much. There were so many people in the earlier service. There are even more this time. And I was talking to someone who feels trapped. And I said it's nothing but a feeling. Because the reality is there is a way out. I'll repeat. There is the feeling and there is the reality. You can either choose to move by the feeling or move by the reality that you grasp through faith in Christ Jesus. We looked at the example. Of something the disciples had not understood. In the book of Mark chapter 6. Jesus tells them. Let's, I want you to go to a solitary place. Because you have been up and down. And I want you to have some time to eat. They got into the boat. But by the time they reached on the other side. There was a crowd. 5,000 hungry men. Besides the children. And the women. And the Bible says, the disciples told Jesus, Jesus, send these people away. Jesus told them, feed them. Imagine. Imagine. That's like putting them in a dilemma. Because there was no kiosk around, no market around, no shops around, no nothing. There's somewhere in the wilderness. Somewhere in the desert there. And Jesus tells them, feed them. It's like he is putting them in a dilemma. It's like he is setting them up for failure in the mind of people. But Jesus was setting them for a miracle. 
Jesus was setting them for the glory of God. And that glory of God was meant to pass through their hands. I mean, the bread, the fish multiplied in the hands of the disciples. Immediately after that miracle, Jesus tells them, I want you to go into this boat, go on the other side of Bethesda. Just let me wave the cloud, uh, the, I mean, uh, the crowd bye bye. And he was left praying for them. He was left praying. But now, they find themselves in the sea. The storm is up. They are being, I mean, swilled all around. Looks like they are going nowhere, but they are, and that they are trapped. But Jesus could see them. And Jesus had been praying for them. And what I want you to see is this. When they thought they are trapped, it was just a thought. When they felt trapped, it was just a feeling. Because Jesus was watching. And he comes, gets into their boat, the wind dies down. And I remember to have said in the earlier service, the circumstances make, makes you feel trapped. And we are not denying the circumstances. But there is the one who changes circumstances. The Bible says that which we see is temporal. But that which we do not see, that which God is holding behind the scene, that which God is doing behind the scene, that is eternal. It cannot change. It's permanent. And it is very important to see that the circumstances that we are in now, COVID-19, may make us feel, feel like we are trapped. Oh, we are not. That devil should know we are not. There is a way out. Because the way is with us. The way lives in us. The way walks with us. The way is for us. His name is Jesus. And that's what I want you to see. That it is but a feeling. The enemy of our soul knows how to manipulate our feelings so that we feel lost. I said in the earlier service, Exodus chapter 14, God tells the children of Israel, I want you to go camp near the sea there. And a Pharaoh will come, he will think you are confused. He will think that you are wandering in the wilderness. He will think you are trapped, so to speak. And the Bible comes and says, he will come after you. But when he comes after you, thinking that you are trapped, don't think. Don't buy into the lie of the enemy. Don't buy into the lie that you are also trapped. You are set up for the miracle, but Pharaoh is set up for destruction. I'll say that again. Pharaoh is set up for destruction, but you are set up for a miracle. Don't, don't buy into the idea of the world that you are set up to be destroyed, to be, destroyed, to be crushed, no, 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 no. God has set you up for a miracle. Listen to this. Mark chapter 6. The Bible says that when Jesus got into that boat, the weed died up quickly. They found themselves on the other side. You are not set up for delay. You are not set up for the destruction in the sea. You are set up for acceleration. Hear that. And in the case of the children of Israel, Exodus 14, the Pharaoh is the one who was being set up for 
destruction. And God said, I'll gain glory over the nations. I'll gain glory over Pharaoh. I'll gain glory over the Egyptians. When I destroy Pharaoh and you yourself have a highway in the sea. I am prophesying to someone who thinks you are trapped between the Red Sea and the Pharaoh. I'm declaring a highway in the sea. Not even on land. I'm saying a highway right in the sea. Because why, why do I say that? He is the way. He is the way. And he cannot lie. He told the children of Israel, I'm taking you from the, the land of Egypt. You are going to your own. God cannot lie. And circumstances do not intimidate him. They do not, I mean, stop him or oppose him. I mean, he overrides them. He just overrides them. He just walks over them. Just like Jesus was walking over the stones. It is very important for, for you and for me to feel, I mean, not to agree to our feelings that we are trapped. Oh, hold on. Watch this. The Bible says of Joseph, the brothers of Joseph, after they sold him to the Ishmaelites, they said, now we have him where we wanted him. That's what they said. They said, now we have him exactly where we wanted him. He will never come back. He will live as a slave forever. And he will die as a slave. Watch this. They thought the trap had already snapped on Joseph. Only to discover that God was setting them up for humiliation. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 9 verse 14. I love this. Let me read it before I go to exactly where I want us to dwell on this. Chapter 9. This is what David said in verse 14. I love this so much. Second part of I, he says he will declare his places and in the gates of the daughter of Zion there I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net that they have hidden. He says in the gates of Z the daughter of Zion, right at the gates of Jerusalem, I'm going to rejoice, I'm going to stage a dance, I'm going to praise, because the nations that wanted to destroy me, the nations that wanted to destroy my life, the nations, the people, groups that were plotting against me, they, the very pit they dug for me, they have fallen into it. And the very night they hid for me, they were caught into it. Let me tell you today, you are not the one trapped. The enemy is coming right into the trap. Right into the trap. You may feel trapped, but the reality is, it's the enemy who is coming right into the trap. They thought Joseph is trapped. Joseph is in the place where we, would, we wanted him to be. He would die as a slave. They never knew God was setting up Joseph for a miracle, for promotion. But he was setting them up for humiliation. Turn with me now to the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings. Chapter 6, 
I love this story very, very much. I'm telling you. Why do I love it? It has spoken to me many, many, many times. This one, this story has spoken to me many, many, many times in my life. I'm beginning from verse 8. The Bible says now the king of Aram or the king of Syria was at war with Israel. I don't know who is at war with you. Whether it's that storm. Whether they, it's debts. Whether it's poverty. Whether it's a curse. Whatever it is. The Bible says after conferring with his officers he said I'll set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Armenians or the, or the Syrians are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place, indicated by the man of God, time and time again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. Follow this. I want to declare by the word of God. God is not going to allow you to fall into the trap of the Armenians. I'll say that again. He will not. I'm going to declare by the word of God. The time for the enemy to be setting up trap after trap, it's over. I'll say that again. It is over. It's time the Armenians get caught in their own trap. I'll say that again. It's time. And I want to remind you of what we, you know, of Mark chapter 6 verse 52. This is what the Bible is telling us. The disciples had not understood the miracle of the, the five loaves and two fish. Why? Because Jesus had brought them into the wilderness. Not to put them in a dilemma, but to have the miraculous power flow through their hands. They had not understood it. But I want you to see something here. Something very important here. The king of Israel understood very well. If the man of God tells me that I'm not going to fall into the trap, I'll not fall into the trap. If the man of God says, that I'll be stay safe. I will stay safe. Listen to this. Believe the Lord your God you'll be established. Believe the prophets and you'll make progress. Believe the prophets and you will prosper. That's, that's the Bible. That's the Bible. The Bible says the king of Israel checked again and again and he found what the, king, the prophet told him was true because God cannot lie. God cannot lie. And he escaped the traps of the enemy time and time again. I want to declare by the word of God the traps will be set but it's the enemy that will fall into them. I declare by the word of God. Uh, hear me and hear me well. This is reverberating. This is something that is bouncing up again and again in the spiritual realm. The enemy will fall into the trap he has set up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time. It's time. It's time for the enemy to fall into that trap as you escape just by there. Joseph, the Bible tells me when the brothers thought he was, they were setting him up 
for destruction they were setting they set him up for promotion what does the bible tell me the bible says here we are this enraged the king of aram that is tribes who are being frustrated and again and again he summoned his officers and demanded to them of them tell me which one of which one of us is on the side of the king of israel none of us my lord the king said one of his officers but elisha the prophet who is in israel tells the king of israel the very words you speak in your bedroom how many know our god knows everything our god knows everything our god knows what goes on anywhere any place any time he knows and these men of these men of ben hadad told him no 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 not none of us none of us but there is that prophet elisha in israel what you speak in the bedroom he comes and tells the king of israel in a plan you make will be frustrated i wish the king he did to his to, you know to his men listen to this i wish i wish but he did it he did it he went on with his plans and he said go find him find out where he is the king ordered so i can send men and capture him the report came back he is in dothan then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there they went by night and surrounded the city listen to this god is not god was not afraid that they told the king where elisha was he didn't mind he didn't mind sometimes in your life the enemy will be given what looks like an advantage to him because that is what puts him in the trap i'll say that again sometimes god will just allow the enemy to have what we would call an advantage but that is what will uh, that's the bait that is the bait that will have the enemy right into the tr- in the trap the bible says he was told he is in dothan the bible says when the servant of the man of god got up and went out early next morning a army with the horses and chariots had surrounded the city oh no my lord what shall we do the servant asked the servant said we are trapped what are we going to do now that we have nowhere to go the servant thought he was trapped and i'm going to submit to you again that feeling that thought is just a feeling is just a thought there is another reality there is another reality whether it is in that place of work where they say now we have him we have her where we want it whether it is in business and there are, there is there is a lot of betrayal today a lot of conmanship today and somebody says now we have him we have her exactly where we want it can i help you let everybody be a liar but our god shall remain true when he said he will never leave you nor forsake you he meant it he meant it when he said when you go through the fires he will be there you go through the floods he will be there he will make sure the floods do not sweep you by the fires do not consume you when he said that he meant it 
Here, the servant wakes up in the morning and all around the city and especially around the house where Elisha was, there were chariots, there were horses, there were men armed to the teeth. And the boy says, what are we going to do? We are trapped. Where can we go? Where can we turn? Who can help us now? I mean, when we, are, when we have that feeling of being trapped, it's because we don't see anyone coming to help us. We don't see any way out. This is how Gehazi was at this time. He told the man of God, we have no way out. Gehazi, you are wrong. Very wrong. Very wrong. There is another reality. There is another world you are not seeing. But the prophet can see it. Watch this. The Bible says, in verse 16, don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The ones you can see. Compared to the ones we have. Oh my goodness. Can I help you? The ones you don't see are more than the ones you see. I'll, I'll prophesy to you this morning. The ones you don't see who are on your side. The ones that are assigned to help you. The ones that are assigned to accelerate your destiny. The ones that are assigned to make sure that you are protected. They are more than they on the chariots, the ones on the horses, the ones who are armed to the teeth, the ones who are talking. Listen, the ones who are not talking and they are with you are more than the ones who are talking, who are against you. I'll say that again. Don't be deceived by their words. You are, you are not trapped. I declare by the word, the word of God. They that are saying that they will sell your property, sell your children, sell everything you have. And I have news for you. Let they that have mouth talk. Give them that space. Let them talk. Their talk does not affect the mind of God. I'll say that again. Give them space to talk because their talk will never affect the mind of God towards you, towards me, towards us, towards our children. The mind of God is fixed. That's why the Bible says the word of the Lord is forever settled in heaven. The word God has for you, the word God has spoken over your life is forever settled in heaven. Watch this. The Bible comes and says, Elisha tells Gehazi, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't subject your life to your feelings. Don't subject your life to the feelings that are coming out of the enemy's 
manipulations, fear, anger, bitterness, frustrations. Ah, 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 ah. Hold on. Remember what Moses told the children? I mean, God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, tell them to be still. Exodus 14, tell them to be still. They will see the salvation of the Lord. They will see the deliverance of the Lord. Tell them to hold their peace. That's what Elisha is saying, telling this young man. Don't be afraid. They that are with us, and they are not talking, are more than the ones that are against us whom you can see who are busy talking against us. Give them space to talk. But their talk should not affect you. Wait a minute. The Bible says. Verse 17. And Elijah, Elisha prayed. Open his eyes Lord. So that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And he looked and saw on the hills. He saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha, who is trapped. Is it Elisha? Is it Elisha or the Syrians? Who have come into the trap now? Is it Elisha or is it the Syrians? Elisha is all covered. He is surrounded by chariots of fire. Theirs were just chariots. The ones that were surrounding Elisha were chariots of fire. Who is going to burn who? Who is going to destroy who? Wait a minute. The Bible says and we are not talking about one or two chariots. They are all around the man of God. And the Bible comes and says, As the enemy came towards him. I love this. God is not going to, start to stop the enemy. This right time. There are times he will stop the enemy. There are times when... He, he is going to allow the enemy to come very close so that he can fall into the trap. Don't be afraid that the enemy is coming with a lot of noise, a lot of pressure, a lot of intimidation. Mm -mm -mm. Hold your peace. The Bible comes and says, here, as the enemy came down towards, Elisha prayed. Wait a minute. Strike this army with the blindness. So, that, so he struck them with the blindness as Elisha had said. What, the, what does the Bible tell me? This is where the story gets to be juicy here. Elisha told them, this is not the road, this is not the city. Follow me. And I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. Think about it. This is the very man they are looking for. God has blinded them. And the man of God tells them, just follow me. Just follow me. Because I will take you to the man that you are looking for. This story is very juicy for me. Because I cannot imagine a whole army following the very man they are looking for. But, but that's, that's our God. Our God is a God of fun. 
It's a God of drama. He's a God of humor. God, God loves to enjoy his enemies. That's why in Psalm chapter 2, the Bible says he, when they are plotting against him, when he, he, as he is seated on the throne, he laughs. He cracks. I mean, he just rolls. He, tell, he just says, let them go on. Let, let them just go on. Here, the Bible says, after they entered the city, Elijah said, Lord, now, the fun is here. Lord, open the eyes of these men so that they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked. There they were inside Samaria. Who is trapped now? Who is trapped? The Syrians. The Syrians. They are the ones who are finding themselves right in Samaria. And the king is there. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, shall I kill them? My father, shall I kill them? I love this. Let me tell you. The reason why the king escaped not once, not twice, is because he believed in the prophet. He is even calling him my father. Do I kill them? Do you, want, do you want me to kill them? Do not kill them. That's what Elisha said. Don't even kill them. Don't kill them. I just want them to learn a lesson that they will never forget. We are not the kind of people they should be thinking about attacking. Because the minute they attack us, they fall into the trap. They are the ones who are going to be in the trap. The Bible says, do not kill them. He answered, would you kill those you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. Just, just give them lunch. Everybody a bottle of water. And tell them to go back. So he prepared a great feast for them. After they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the hands, the bands of, from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. What am I saying? They set a trap. God allowed them to set a trap so that they would fall into the trap and that way they would never never attack Israel again. The way God is going to stop your attack is by making them, allowing them to set a trap, they will fall into it themselves. I'm declaring by the word of God. The trap they have set against you is the trap they will fall into so that they will never set another trap against you again. But you have a part. Feed them. Give them lunch. Pray for them. Bless them. Don't be bitter with them that they, they set the trap. No, 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 no. The trap was meant to stop any further attacks. Just feed them, bless them, forgive them, do them good. The rest, God will take care of the rest. What am I saying? You are not trapped. It's the enemy that is trapped. And he is trapped so that he stops all his attacks. I declare by the word of God, the trap they have set now is their last trap to set against you. I declare that by the word of God. The trap they have set now, that is their last. Why? Because they will fall into it. And once they fall into it, 
they will never dare to set another one again. Wait a minute. Please listen to this. God is a God of wisdom. His ways are not our ways. But we can adopt his ways and when we adopt his ways, we are on our way to success. We are on our way to victory. We, we can say we refuse to be afraid. God never gave us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and a sound mind. Listen to this. We can right now decide to exercise our minds and make quality decision that we refuse to be afraid. Why? The enemy just set up the last trap against us. He is falling into it. He will never, never come that our way again through that trap. It's the last one. In the name of Jesus. It is the last one. In the name of the Lord. Watch this. Listen to this. This is so vital. So good. The Bible tells me of the three Hebrew children. I mean the cabinet secretary, the principal secretaries of the day, the high and the mighty of the day thought now we have them. Now we have them. We have them exactly where we wanted them to be. Because they have refused to worship the idol set up in Dura. And now the king is very mad with them. Now they were banned. In fact, the king had said that the furnace should be heated seven times. God was not worried that the furnace is being heated seven times. I wish they did 47 times. God was not worried. And that's why the children, the three Hebrew children told King Nebuchadnezzar, and King Nebuchadnezzar, you can live as long as you, lo you want. We don't have a problem with that. But when you think we are trapped, we don't think it that way. When you think we are confused, we don't think it that way. When you think that we are going to burn, that's not our idea. It's your idea. We don't think that's the way. There is another reality, king, you don't see. But we can see it. We can see it. When you are feeling sorry for us, I mean, we don't feel sorry for ourselves. Because there is another reality that we see which you don't see. Our God. Our God. Our God is able to save us from that furnace. He is well able. Well able. And we know he will. But in case he thinks otherwise, for us to die is gain. To live is Christ. We are not losing in any way. You think we are going to lose our lives. That's not what we think. We, there is another reality or oh king that you don't see. And we live by the other reality that you don't see. King said, okay. If that's what you choose, he got the bounce house. 
that were very willing to throw them in. The ones who carried them to throw them in got burnt by the furnace. I declare by the word of God. Never touch the Lord's anointed. You will never be guiltless. The ones that got hold of you. The ones that will get hold of you. I'm speaking to someone. To put you in that furnace. Put you in the trap. Put you in the fire. I sympathize with them. I feel sorry for them. They cannot escape the fire. No way. They will not escape the fire. Watch this. They threw them in. They died. The three boys were, were thrown in and there is someone that was waiting for them. Someone was just there telling them, come guys, let's have fellowship. It's a long time. They, we have been in quarantine. It's a long time. Come in, come in, just come in. Walked into that part, I mean, while were thrown in that palace. They started saying, praise the Lord. We love you, Jesus. How is heaven? How are the mansions being prepared there? You said you are going to prepare mansions. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about ours. The Bible comes and says, they had a sweet fellowship. The king who could not sleep. Can I help you? I declare by the word of God. Like Peter who slept in prison. You will sleep. Your enemies will be awake. I declare that by the word of God. The king could not sleep. The boys were having fellowship with Jesus. The king looked and said, my goodness, what's happening? We thought that, we, we thought that they are where everybody thought they would be consumed. The Bible comes and says the king, the king said, these guys are intact. They are, they are intact. The fire has no effect on them. And in fact, there is another one inside there. And he looks different. Looks like the son of God. The king said, get them out. Call them out. When they were called out, Jesus told them, now you can go. Let me go back to do my work. You go. I mean, go, go, and I, I will go. Go to them. And when you go to them, tell them not to try again. What does the Bible tell me? Walked out. When they walked out, they were looking at them. Were touching their hairs. Were touching their clothes. They said, my goodness, their clothes are intact. Their hair is intact. They don't even have any smell of smoke on them. They smelled Jesus. Not smoke. They must have had a perfume on them that was very nice. The next thing, they are being promoted. Can I help you? I'm prophesying. God allowed them to put you in the trap so that you can be promoted. Not demoted, 
promoted. I declare that by the word of God. Because you will come out intact. No smell of smoke. You'll be smelling. You know, you'll have another perfume. Very sweet fragrance. The fragrance of Jesus. Some of them will die. As the, the ones who try to, who, who are putting you in. The ones who will be alive, you will be their boss. I want us to pray for the word of God. I'm praying that this word catches up with you. I'm speaking to someone in this city, somebody in the diaspora, may this word catch up with you. May it be that in the name of Jesus, the trap they set, they set it so that it becomes the last of the attacks they will have over you. May that trap become a pathway to promotion for you like it happened to the three Hebrew boys. In the name of Jesus, may that trap bring glory and you show glory over your life by having you walk on a highway in the sea like it happened with the children of Israel. May this thing that looks like a trap be used by God to facilitate acceleration to your destiny like it happened with the disciples. May it be from today in the name of Jesus. The thing that will make you your hands flow with the miraculous. As it happened with the disciples when they looked like they were put in a dilemma. But it is so that their hands can experience the miraculous. The bread, the fish multiplied in their hands. I declare multiplication in the name of Jesus. I declare a highway. For you who feel trapped, I declare a highway in the sea. Not just on land, not in the air, but in the sea. May a highway a highway stretch from one end of the show to the other end of the show. May the waters that are meant to swallow you up stand up to salute you as you walk across to your destiny. I declare this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. May the creatures in those waters rise up to bless the name of the Lord for your acceleration. May the angels of the Lord carry you. Let they carry it like they carried Elisha. Elisha was left behind by Ahab. Ahab ran on his chariots and they said Elisha you don't know what you are doing you will be swallowed up by the rain if it's, the rains do not swallow you up because you don't want my ride you will perish I declare by the word of God may the angels that carried Elisha past Ahab carry you past all that have been looking to destroy your life. I declare that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I declare by the word of God that that feeling of being trapped is just but a feeling. And from today I declare that feeling give way to the reality and the reality is there is a way for he is the way. 
There's a way for you. There is a way for me. For he is the way. He is the way. He is the way. May you receive promotion out of that trap. Unusual promotion. Accelerated promotion. In the name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for the tithe. I want to thank you for the offerings. I celebrate men and women who are very careful to tithe into this house. Because they believe in this as the storehouse. They believe this is where they get their food. This is where they get the anointing, the grace, the prophetic word to propel them forward like we did today. Thank you so much. Those from Kiambu, our city here. Those from outside Kiambu and you are connected to this house. Those in the diaspora who are supporting us. We bless God for you. We have men and women who left this house and went to the nations. And they are contacting us. They are telling us, we we'll remember. We we'll remember. We we'll remember. And because you remember, may God remember you. Whatever you are, because you remember, may God remember you. Father, I thank you for your people. May this word catch up with them. In more ways than one. In more ways that they can imagine. In Jesus' name. Let us worship.